Makami is one of the best and one of the most interesting underground rappers. But what is it that makes him so unique? Watch this video to the end to find out. That shit sounds so coarse. So who is Makami? Well, the thing is, no one really knows. He keeps a lot of his personal life private. We don't know his name, his age, we know pretty much nothing. All that we do know is that he's a Haitian American rapper and how his face looks like. But I'm not gonna show it here because there's a reason why he wears the mask. To understand what makes Mak Hami so great, we gotta start at the beginning. Mak started his rapping career in 2004 with the release of his debut album Goon Grizzle. And also, the album was released through a random ass label called Slizzbag Entertainment. After his debut project, Mak wouldn't release a studio album for quite a long time. But in the time between his debut and his next album, Mak would link up with West Side Gun and he would start working with his label Griselda Records. In the early times of working for Griselda, Mak was only producing and shooting videos for the group. But when West Side Gun found out that Mak could rap, he encouraged him to start doing music again. And that was pretty much exactly what happened. Mak started releasing music again. He was focusing on his solo career, but he was also heavily associated with Griselda. But his relationship with West Side Gun and the whole Griselda crew fell out at some point in the mid 2010s. There was a drama that involved the god Fahim and West Side Gun, but I'm not gonna go into all that since that's a whole another story for maybe a future video, who knows, probably not though. <laughs> Basically, Mak sided with the god Fahim and completely left Griselda. Now, I don't know what happened, but when Mak left Griselda, he started releasing music like crazy. His run in 2017 is like genuinely insane. In 2017, Mak released four albums, two mixtapes and four EPs, with one of these albums being his masterpiece, but more on that later. At this point, Mak really started buzzing in the underground. In 2018, he also continued with his streak of releasing an insane amount of projects. But after 2018, Mak kinda cooled down with the number of projects he would release per year, but something really great would happen in late 2020. On Christmas Day 2020, Whole Lotta Red was finally real. Nah, I'm just playing. Nah, but actually, on Christmas Day, Westside Gun tweeted this. It seemed like Mak and Westside Gun finally squashed their beef and linked up after all of those years. And with this happening, we would get a lot of new music from the two the next year. As Mak would appear on Westside Gun's Hitler Wears Herms A and B, and Westside Gun would be an executive producer on Mak's most popular album to date, Pray for Haiti. After all these years of not working together, they definitely came out with a bang. Pray for Haiti was so popular that out of all people, Drake posted himself listening to one of the songs on the album. After the critical acclaim and the commercial success of Pray for Haiti, what was next for Mark Hummy? Well, he continued doing what he does best, and that is to just release more projects consistently. That's pretty much all he's been doing, and with this, we are finally done with the brief history of Mark Hummy. Now we are finally here. What makes Mak Hami so great? Mak is truly a one-of-a-kind artist. And the best project that perfectly shows all of his strengths is his 2017 album The Get, The Gospel According To. To me, this is one of the best jazz rap albums that I've ever heard. On this album, you can hear Mak at his absolute best. No filler, all killer. Each track on this album feels so fresh and unique. This album truly has some of Mark's best tracks, beats, verses, singing and messaging all across the board. I strongly recommend this album to everyone. It's amazing and I think that it's the best way to start with Mark's discography. Now, I'm gonna get real for a second to man up and admit that I haven't listened to Mark's entire discography. Cause the man has like 20 plus albums, a fuck ton of EPs and I just don't have the time to listen to all of them. So if you want, you can call me a fake fan. But I have listened to quite a few of them, so I'm gonna recommend you with some of my personal favorite Mach projects that I've heard. My second favorite Mach project is this one. And ain't no way I'm even gonna try to pronounce this shit. This is a collab EP between Mach and Earl Sweatshirt, with Earl producing pretty much all of the songs. This EP is a nice 17 minutes of perfection. Mack and Earl are a great duo and they complement each other very well. 
and DCP is the best showcase of their chemistry. Mox spits some crazy bars over Earl's amazing production, but I wanna give a huge shout out to this one track called Embarrassment of Riches, Chops, cause this song is something else. First of all, Max singing on this song is amazing, and the beat is also sounding so angelic with this sample loop that is at the same time bouncy and kinda chill. So yeah, definitely give this project a listen, Dado approve. And now, I can't be giving you Mark Hummy recommendations without mentioning Pray For Haiti. As I previously said, Westside Gun was an executive producer on this album, and it really shows from the beats to the skits that you could easily hear on a Westside Gun album. This project really shows Mark's range in music, and this is probably his most accessible album, but it's a banger, so definitely give it a listen. Now that you listen to a couple of Mark Hami albums, you probably want to get some on vinyl. Well, if you do want to cop a Mac Hami album on vinyl, save at least a couple of hundred dollars. Yes, you heard me right. Because if you go to Mac Hami's official website, you can see just how much he charges for vinyls, CDs, cassettes, and digital downloads of his albums. I've seen a lot of people complain about this, and I kinda get it. Because if your favorite artist is selling physical copies of his music for absurd amounts of money that only billionaires can buy, I would be kinda mad too. But at the same time, I also get Mark Hami for doing this, because we all know how little streaming services pay artists. Mark knows the worth of his music and he would rather sell it for his own price. And for those people that do actually buy Mark's music through his website, first of all, who are their parents? And also, I'm sure that it gives them a feel of exclusivity, and I think that's the whole point of it. No casual fan of Max will buy the get for $3,000. Only the quote-unquote stands of his will. Mark is well aware that he is an underground artist, and by doing this, not only does he make absolute bank, but he also gets a good amount of publicity. And that's why Mark Hami is hip-hop's most expensive secret. Yo, what's up? Uh, I know this video is all over the place, but I really wanted to do a video on Mac since I find him so interesting and he also makes pretty good music. So that's a great combo for a video topic. Uh, and yeah, thank you for the support on my uh, latest video on Blade. Uh, that really means a lot. And if you want to support me and my channel, uh, hit the like button, subscribe or whatever the fuck. And yeah, go listen to Mac's music. And until next time, bye.